Hey, welcome back, guys. Um, so today we're gonna do another business tour. This business has been around. Oh my gosh, I've been around Walpock now almost 20 years, and this business has been here long before I ever was around in Walpock. So we're gonna meet these people. This is a family-run business, and some of my favorite people in Walpock. I really like them. Uh, super glad that we get to do this. So hang on. The business that we are touring today is. Let's see if I can get their sign. Goodyear Shoe Repair. They are awesome people. So wait till you meet them. And they do awesome things. They've helped me out quite a bit. Okay, so this is the front of their building. Um, they got some really cool displays. They change out all the time. But let's go in and meet them. So we come into the store, and you can see they have boots everywhere. Boots and shoes all over the place. Just really cool store. All right, so we're coming up, and here is Mr. Dale. How's it going, Mr. Dale? Good, Todd. How are you today? Good. Good. Thank thanks, you. Thanks for having us in your awesome store. Thank you. Um, I know I appreciate your store quite a bit. You guys have done so many things for, for me. Um, so welcome. Thank you. To the channel. So tell us a little bit about yourself. The business uh, is unique. Uh, I don't feel that I'm necessarily unique. Uh, I have started this uh, position in 2011 when I bought the business from mom and dad. Uh, I had actually spent uh, 25 years in heating and air conditioning before I decided to go to shoe repair. Not much crossover. Quite a, quite a <laughs> quite a difference. Quite a difference. But I had helped mom and dad when I was younger. When I was in 18 or less, I would come in and help do shoe repair. Uh, so I had a little bit of the background in me. Uh, it wasn't a, a complete uh, strange uh, identity to do. Uh, but I'd reached the point working for other people that I said, well, I'm putting all these extra hours and yeah, I'm making money, but I'm working for them 12 hours a day. Why don't I work for myself 12 hours a day? And I've been very, very uh, satisfied to be able to come in and be a, a small business owner. It's not easy, as you're well aware, to be a small business owner. I completely understand. Absolutely. But I'm very happy I did it. And the biggest, uh, the, the best thing for me was I didn't have to go and create a new business. Mom and Dad had created it. Well, actually, the people before us, uh, Mike Knodel actually created it. He started in 1968 uh, is when he came over and first opened up the business okay. so he had started it in 68 uh, he became ill couldn't run it and mom and dad took over in 1980 and then mom and dad ran it from 1980 to 2011 when I bought it okay. so I didn't have to create a new business I had to take an existing business with an existing customer base and I had to continue to do the good quality work right that was the goal and so from that aspect I had it a little easier that all I have to do is do a good job and everything should be okay and the quality of work is amazing. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. So, that. question, how did the name Goodyear come about? Because, I mean, it's not in relation to Goodyear Tire, which is uh, St. Mary's area. It was it, Goodyear then, back then, right? Believe it or not, it kind of is. The gentleman that opened, actually, there was a gentleman in St. Mary's that opened a Goodyear Shoe Store. And Goodyear Shoe Store in St. Mary's was named after the Goodyear Rubber Plant in St. Mary's at that time. Uh, Goodyear was making several other uh, agricultural products and military products. They never made tires there, but okay. they made other things. And so he called it Goodyear Shoe Store to help people buy safety toes that work there because he wanted to you know, honor and represent the Goodyear rubber plant that was okay. there. Okay. So he started that um, and opened it up and was also doing shoe repair as well and then would sell Red Wing products as well. Uh, Jerry Spoon was his name, uh, him and his wife Helen. And it was then, and I can't tell you when they opened up, but it was shortly thereafter, this Mike Canoto I mentioned, was their son-in-law. And he came over here and opened up Goodyear Shoe Repair. Okay. So that they would be different. Um, so they had a connection between the two, but they weren't directly affiliated and they didn't operate with each other. Oh, okay. Uh, then Mike became ill. Jerry tried to operate both stores at the same time which was too much, and that's when mom and dad stepped in and came and took over this one. Uh, several years later, and another owner later, the one in St. Mary's did happen to close. Oh, okay. Uh, so they were, they were, they've been shut down for quite a while now. Oh. Uh, but there is an affiliation with the Goodyear Tire and Rubber, per se. Okay. Uh, we've never infringed on anything, and no one's ever came after us. Uh, and you'll be, uh, 
curious to know, there are actually two other uh, stores named Goodyear. Technically, now our name is Goodyear Shoe Service. Okay. Because of the ownership changes through the years. Uh, and there are two other Goodyear Shoe Services in the United States over on the East Coast. And okay. every once in a while we get confused about which one we are, believe it or not. So there's more than one. I could see how that happened. <laughs> exactly. So, but yeah, that, that's a little bit of the back history of, of how we got to where we're at. And it was related technically to the Goodyear plant over there. Awesome. So we're going to learn a little bit about the history of the building, and I believe that's where Mom comes in. Yes, that will be Mother. Uh, she has a little more of the actual uh, time frames of the building itself. Uh, the building has been here for quite some time, obviously. All right. Well, hi, Miss Patty. Hi. How are you today? Just fine, thank you. Good. So um, you were kind of the you're the historian of the building, more or less. Okay. Uh, I just had a gentleman ask about trying to find where Lyman Central Cafeteria used to be. And I said, right here. Okay. Uh, it was a cafeteria, it was a restaurant, uh, but always a cafeteria style. Okay. It's the young people, I don't even know if they know what a cafeteria style is. <laughs> and it was, all the food was sitting there, you went by and took your dish of whatever you wanted, and at the end, a cashier added up what you had picked up, and that's how you were charged. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. So that dates back to when exactly? Do you, do you uh, have any idea? Well, when we got the building in the 80s, uh, it was probably, I can't, it was always a restaurant because it was a railroad. This was the hotel. Oh, okay. The second floor has an apartment and the back floor is a ballroom. The top floor has 12 bedrooms and one is a suite because they didn't want to be known as the 13th room. Oh, okay. And the people would walk down from, the, the railroad train would stop and everybody would walk into town here and find some place to sleep for the night. Okay. And that's how it started. Oh, and, that's cool. That's and, really uh, cool. Yeah. That's, that's awesome history. So, awesome. Um, so, can you tell us a little bit about the products that you carry and um, why those specific products, I guess? Well, we started when we started the store on the other side of the street uh, where the parkway is. That was where our half of our building was. We only okay. owned half of, or rented half of it. Uh, we had much smaller inventory because we were a much smaller business. Okay. Itself was smaller. Uh, but it handled the... Uh, it handled work boots was the main thing at the time and the repair okay and uh so as as it, we got better uh we brought in a few more things more cowboy boots he mainly had had work boots mm -hmm. and shoes and we had a lot of lady shoes back then okay we didn't have to at the time fight with the discount stores the way we do today right so right. we gave up have carrying many just one style of the ladies, good shoes. I see. And they're a real good shoe if you got a bothersome foot. Right, right. You guys uh, are pretty good at putting people in the right footwear. For right, sure. getting the right size. It's very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then Dale, well, we we kept expanding, and it's expanded more than since Dale got it. Uh, we have four brands: uh, Carolinas, Justins, Red Wings. Uh, we carry foam tread slippers for late, that when Hemmert's closed. Uh, they, uh, all Glaze Acres come down and ask us to carry a slipper that the people in the home could wear and oh, not okay. slip on the s tile floors. Well, that's cool. So we got into that. Uh, we carry purses, anything to take care of your boots. Uh, and the, the building um, itself is, uh, uh, I guess, a mainstay of the block. Right. It's oh one yeah. Of them really, really old ones. Well, that's what I was telling. I was telling uh, out, outside when I, on my intro. I said that I've been around Walpock for almost twenty years now, and th you guys have been here longer than I was here. You know, I've been around. So, yeah. That I mean, it's it's cool. And you guys do much more than just shoe repair, because I know I've had jackets fixed here. I've had all kinds of things. You. So I have to ask, what is probably the strangest thing that you guys have ever had to repair? Uh, for me, I would probably have to say that green head. It was a conveyor belt on a green head for a combine. 
Okay. That we had to patch. Okay. Because the replacement one was terribly expensive. So we got a patch and it made it through a couple seasons before they did have to finally bite the bullet and buy a new one and replace it. That's okay. That is definitely not what I expect. But you can tell that is a, that is a significant farming community kind of thing. You know, yeah, right. I never would have even right. believed you know bringing something like that in to fix. It. And it was funny you mentioned it because a second man came in and wanted to do it again, a different gentleman. And I said, "Yeah, we can. It worked." I said, "But not real solid about it." So he decided not to do it. But I actually had two guys come in and ask about that. That's that's yeah. amazing. Uh, I so. don't know what other you might have uh, um, unique. We've done so many, We've done so many different things. Uh, something that some people say, well, you can't fix this. And we tell them when we do hire someone, we say, never say you can't fix it. Look at it and say, what can we do to make this work? Right. And so we keep that in mind when we go to fix something. Yeah, we have to see it to know whether it can be repaired or not. And then uh, our focal point is functionality. If we can include fashion and make it look better, we will. But the bottom line is we want it to be functional. Right. And sometimes you have to make concessions to keep something using it. You have to concede something to say, okay, I can still use it, but I have to use it this way now. Right. That's basically the, the, the struggle that we go through. Well, that's cool. That's super awesome. Do um, you mind showing us around a little bit and we'll sure. get a quick tour of your sure. store no and problem. meet meet some others? And and just back to the building part, as you're well aware, it is unfortunately laid out like most business buildings were back in the 1800s. It's 26 feet wide, but 300 feet long. <clears throat> that's just how downtown buildings are. Right. And yes, we've tried to put as many shoes as we can wherever we can. Um, I wouldn't mind having more product and more brands. I simply can't, I have no place to put it. <laughs> we, we, right. We, we right. only have so much room. Uh, and as you said in the intro, we uh, handle primarily work boots, safety toe shoes, western, uh, some slippers, some sandals, some moccasins. Uh, we try to focus on quality. We try to focus on American made whenever we can. Absolutely. Uh, there, unfortunately, a lot of things are not made in America no matter what kind you want, so we have to concede sometimes. Uh, but to, usually you get better quality uh, and better durability out of something made in America. And a lot of times it's repairable. We can actually fix it and keep it going and moving on. Uh, we have had a variable, like she said, different types and, and styles of shoes and brands. Uh, doing the tour, the outside is the showroom. Uh, <laughs> shoes on both sides of the walls, because that's all we've got. Right. And then racks and displays and such. Uh, and as she said, maintenance items for taking care of products, um, insoles, cushion, comfort. Um, we don't get into the orthotic world a whole lot, but we do have some arch supports that, that are borderline orthotic. Right. Uh, so we try to help people with the fit, as she pointed out. Because uh, a lot of times people come in and they just don't have the right size shoe. Maybe we can give them something to help make the shoe fit way better, last longer, etc. It's our best choice. Awesome. Um, again, showroom, uh, 75 feet from the front door to the counter. Pretty long walk, but again, you can see everything on both sides. Uh, tried to do uh, the best we could with the layout that we have. Um, pointing out all just kinds of different stuff. Everything up front, like you said, you've seen the kids kids boots, uh, rubber boots, safety toe shoes, safety toe boots, women's boots, women's shoes, women's dress shoes, women's athletics. Uh, again, not focal points, but things that we have. Right. Um, as you get closer to the front of the building, we get into a little more of the uh, ancillary items where you have the arch supports, uh, heel cushions, and accessories uh, that would go along with it. We've got belts, we've got leather wallets uh, on the other side of the building, uh, shoe cream, shoe polishes, conditioners, all kinds of stuff, uh, moccasins, slippers for uh, men and women both. Um, and then uh, further on back behind this big wall is the actual repair area where we do the repair. Um, we have many machines to do the different jobs. Uh, it looks though like every other workshop. It's it's always it's organized chaos. It is yeah. right. Uh, you may not believe it, but as soon as something's sitting there out of place, you see it and it's not right. Okay, who left that there? Where does it need to go? Right, and the uh, minute you move something, and put it away properly. That's when you can't find it. No, I, I totally get it. <laughs> I have I have to catch this on film. What is the number one rule in this building? Read the ticket. What's the number two rule? If it's not yours, don't touch it. Yeah, yep. <laughs> no, I get it. We run into that all the time. Somebody accidentally does this the bat and you can't find it. If so you exactly. wouldn't mind, if you would take a picture of oh, what's on yeah. the wall, 
Yeah, you can definitely tell this is a family-run business because there's uh, family pictures and the pins in there. We didn't start it when we got it. Dale started it, putting pins in Ohio map for our customers lived there. Okay. And then we started getting people from out of the state, so he got the United States map out and put it oh, wow. there. Oh and my gosh, you guys have a pin in Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somehow they found Wapakoneta, Ohio. And then two on in Canada, there's a couple guys just driving around, and on their way home, they come through Wapak and stop. Look at that, guys. That's so cool. Washington. And okay. it got so far that we had people from other countries, so we had to get our globe out. Oh my gosh, this is cool. And we ended up starting to put pins in the globe where people were from other countries that had somehow made their way to Wapakoneta, Ohio to make it to our store. And it's not just because they stopped here. They actually either bought something or had us fix something, one or the other. That's you can't just stop in and look around and get a pin. You actually have to a right, right. So, yeah. No, that's super cool. You guys are you like worldwide. There you well, go. Well, technically yes, yeah. Yeah, but it really came from a point of of uh, uh, disgruntled on my part. People would complain about having to drive from local towns, New Greenman, St. Mary's, Waynesfield. They're like, gosh, I have to drive all the way to Walpaw. So we refer them to that map from Ohio and say, look where other people drive from. Right, right. That's it's not that bad. Wow. So yeah, we have. I don't know how many other businesses in the in the community can say that they have they have a worldwide fan base. <laughs> I, that, that they, it, it, it just, amazes us. Yeah, it had gotten to be so often that you ask somebody just out of curiosity where they're from, and we're getting all these weird places, and it's like, how did you get here? Well, mom and dad, grandma, aunt and uncle, wedding. Uh, you know, one gentleman. The the most you asked about the most unique repair. The most unique repair story is there was a gentleman driving from Michigan to Florida on his motorcycle. And while he's driving, the sole of his boot came off. And well, it didn't come completely off, it came loose. And he wanted to get it fixed. So he arbitrarily pulled off in Wapakoneta and drove downtown looking for a shoe repair store. He did not use his phone, he did not use Google Maps, he didn't use anything. He just pulled off the highway and started looking. And he found us. Oh my gosh. If he'd have stopped in any other town, 40 miles either way, there was nobody around. Wow. But for, and well, I, I just, that just floored me. That is so cool. That's super cool. We did cool. a quick field repair for him and said, look, when you get to Florida, take this somewhere and have him fix it right. Yeah. So we put it back on, but it needs to be done right. And so he finished his ride out then. So who's this so, gentleman hanging out in the back here? He's is trying it? to hide and stay off film. That's my dad, Chester. Uh, <laughs> Chester and Pat, They, uh, like I said, they're the ones that started the business. He usually hides in the back room. That's right. Uh, doing repair. Got to keep him busy slaving away all the that's time. Right, that's right. That's so, right. He probably yeah. had the most unique repair. There was a little old lady that didn't, ha she, uh, didn't have a husband, and her sweeper belt came off. And so she got a sweeper belt, and Chester put it back on for her. So you guys are full service here, no matter what. I mean, depending on the customer, yeah. I had to fix a shadow box one time that fell off the wall, and it was an elderly lady, and she had nowhere else to go. So she came in and said, "Can you fix my shadow box?" So we did. Um, we had one lady who was at a local jeweler here, and they couldn't get the battery. Uh, she changed her battery and her watch for her, but they couldn't get the back on the watch. So the jeweler told her to come here and have us put the back on the watch. So we well, that's it. awesome. Yeah. So. Well, we appreciate you guys having us in. Um, well, we'll do a me. quick show around. Please. And then, um, but yeah, thanks so much, guys. It's been a pleasure. Uh, you too, Todd. I appreciate the time and effort put in and, and greatly appreciate it. All right. Thank you. One day. thing about it, we have from a home sewing machine all the way up to a harness machine. So we can sew practically anything. I, and I can attest to that. So, <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day. Yep. All right, guys. So, so they got belts and wallets. I'm going to just kind of do a quick pan sure. through here. Can I help you? Shoe polishes. Yeah, I'm kind of looking for a lightweight work shoe. A lighter weight work shoe. Well, can it just be... All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and, like I said, they carry all kinds of different boots and things. Um, but we're going to go ahead and head back outside. All right, so we're heading back out here, outside. Um, if you guys are looking for this place, it's right on Main on Auglaise Street, kind of like right in the middle of town. Um, these people are some of my favorite people, guys, uh, and they do amazing work.
All right, guys, as always, like and subscribe to our videos. Um, if you want to see some more of these business tours, just give me a shout-out. Drop a comment below, okay? Uh, talk to you later. Have a good one, guys.